Welcome in, VizBees. So we are in part four of our Futures Pennant tutorial. In the last tutorial, we filled out our pennant with some of our content, or the text content, and a little bit of a profile piece and our biz logo, um, which for me is the what my future would be, my future career. Um, and uh, so in this tutorial, we're going to add a few more um, like logos to this to just kind of enhance uh, the rest of my the rest of my pennant and the the logos that we're going to build this out with and I'm just going to come back to my um, my example here um, that I'm building off of um, the logos that I'm going to bring in are are pretty much interests of mine things that I really like to do like I really like to mountain bike and so the, the one of the mountain bike brands that I one of the mountain bikes I own is a Yeti and so I brought in a couple of Yeti pictures and I like to mountain bike and snowboard on Mount Ashland, and I really like to paddleboard. So I brought in this logo um, for one of the paddleboards that I that I like to use, and um, so it's just kind of a cool piece to like add some stuff to my pennant. Um, you know, if it were, you know, if I were thinking about this in terms of you as a student, um, maybe I wouldn't be thinking about becoming a teacher. Maybe these are places that I would, you know, maybe want to to work at or do something with. Um, but uh, I just kind of want to add a couple of more visual elements to my pennant and so that's why I've picked um, these things. So I'm going to start with uh, these logos right in here um, and then I'm going to finish off with this logo. And then in part five, our next tutorial that I'm going to bring you guys, um, we're going to go through all of the um, kind of solid elements like text and in the, the piece on the left, our little top piece and uh, our logos and things. Um, and we're gonna add some texture uh, to those to those pieces. So it kind of gives our pennant a more like realistic feel, um, like a real pennant would, because most of those are made of like a, a felt material. So I'm um, gonna jump over here into my um, working document that we've been working on. And I'm gonna go ahead and open up the first file, the, the Yeti logo. And um, just need to find that there. And that is right there, the transparent one, Yeti Cycles, and then go ahead and open that. And this is also a PNG, so I really don't, I don't have to need, I don't need to unlock this, and I can just click and drag this over into our features pennant, and then drop that in. And I need to provide or put a color overlay on this, um, like I've done with some of my other logos that I brought in. So I'm gonna name this real quick. So this is Yeti logo. And I'm going to add a layer style of color overlay. And we're going to make that white. And now I oh, kind of lost it. OK, let's do this. Let's do a color overlay, something that I can see when it's not on there. And let's just go ahead and drop it in right in there. Ooh, maybe I should stick with the, uh, the red. That looks kind of good in there. Let's go ahead and shrink this down, bring that kind of right in this area. I think I'm going to create some spacing here and I'm just going to, you know, kind of drop it in in between um, kind of there. Um, so let's go back to our color overlay. Um, just double click that color overlay. Um, layer style, come back into the color. Um, I'm going to go ahead and try this as red. Let's see how this, let's see how this works. You know, I'm going to got a, I got a different color scheme on my other model going on. Um, but I think I might leave that with red. Well, let's see how that turns out and then do the other ones as white. I don't know. We're playing. So I'm going to go ahead and exit out of that layer. Make sure I save real quick. And then I'm going to open up the next logo that um, I want to use, which is the Mount Ashland logo. And that one is located... There it is, looking right over it. Let's go ahead and open that. And this one is a JPEG, which is slightly different than the PNG, so we're gonna have to do some work on this one when we bring it in. First of all, I've gotta unlock it in the layers panel. Usually most JPEGs are locked in the layers panel there. So I'm gonna click and drag that and then drop that in. And so I gotta do some work on this thing to make it work for my color scheme. Um, so what I'm going to do here is um, using my, and first of all, let's name this layer. So mount a logo. Um, using the magic wand, I'm going to click in all of the logo areas. Um, and there's, so there's multiple areas here, right? These are all kind of separate, separated from each other. 
So I'm going to click on the A and then with the shift key, I'm going to click again and then click on the T. So all of those uh, op objects are selected in the image. And uh, so then when I apply my um, layer mask, the, all the white will disappear and uh, just, the, just the logo will be there. Um, so just in my Mount A logo. Click on the layer mask and now that is just the logo without the white background. And again, I'm going to want to put um, a layer style on this to make it white or uh, red. Um, I think I might just stick with my stick with a white on this one. Um, I'm going to see how this kind of turns out. I might need to make a little bit of adjustments here to both these guys, but we'll see. We'll see how it turns out and kind of overall. So that's the beauty of using a color overlay is you can really change some of these colors really easily versus trying to fill them in with a, like a paint bucket tool or something like that. So I'm just going to hit the enter return key to make that size change go in. And then I'm going to add that layer effect style and color overlay. And uh, look at that red. That red is really popping in there, isn't it? Um, it kind of sandwiches in between this white really nice. So, you know, let's go ahead and leave that red as well. Let's see how this turns out. We're going to, we're going to mix it up a little bit than with my uh, previous example. Um, I'm just going to make this just a little bit smaller maybe because I want to bring in that other logo that I have and it's got to kind of, kind of fit in there and the spacing has got to make sense. The, the spacing needs to be balanced out. So let's go ahead and save real quick just so we don't have a crash scenario like we did in one of our other um, tutorials today. Um, go ahead and close that tab. We don't need the logo any longer. And I'm going to go file open. And the next one I need is the boat logo uh, for the stand up paddle board. This one we got some work to do also. Um, I'm going to take away the paddle itself just to make it a little bit easier to fit in the space that I have it for. And I've got to get rid of the white. This is also a JPEG, not a PNG. So I've got some layer masking to do. So I'm going to bring it over, click and drag and drop it in. And yeah, so that'll kind of fit in there real nicely. I'm going to go ahead and uh, bring it into this black area so I can kind of see what's going on. Um, I'm going to zoom in here real quick so that way I can see what's going on there. And I'm going to use my magic wand tool and do the same thing. I'm going to shift click, shift click, shift click, shift click, shift click. Now I could um, grab this paddle if I wanted to and uh, do the same thing and apply the layer mask. Um, but I think I want to leave the, the paddle out um, just because it'll be kind of small to see and I think I just want the name in there. So on that layer, I'm going to rename it first of all. So boat logo. And then the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add that layer mask to it. And uh, now it's just black. So you're just going to kind of barely see it there because it's the black on black there. Now I need to add that layer effects, that layer style, color overlay. And we're going to make it red like the other ones. And I'm going to kind of squeeze this in here. Um, balance wise, I'm not sure. I'm not sure if I'm digging the way this big, this, this logo here, Mount A, is, is popping out. So I want to make that all kind of fit and balance really nice under it. I kind of want this Yeti logo to be a little bit larger. So it kind of um, frames the, the Mount A and the boat logo together. Um, and then we're going to make this Mount A just a little bit smaller. Bring it in right underneath here. Make the boat logo a little bit smaller. And kind of sneak it in there, kind of center those like that. Let's kind of pull away and see how that looks. Not too bad, not too bad. I think I want to make that Mount A a little bit smaller. Let's make it kind of proportionate here to fit. And maybe that's too small. And there we go. Let's kind of play with the spacing there. We can try if we make the Mount A logo a little bit smaller, maybe we can make the boat logo just a little bit bigger. This is the, the challenge when you're playing with logos that are either square or rectangular. This is the, this is the challenge that you run into. And uh, let's see, space this out just a little bit more, maybe to the edge and maybe just a little bit smaller. And let's kind of come out and see how that looks. It's not looking too bad. Maybe the Yeti needs to be a little bit smaller. 
make that a little bit smaller. Yeah, I kind of probably should make this one, the boat, a little bit smaller. Bring that in, just make that all kind of a little bit smaller so it fits in there a little bit nicer. Space that out just a little bit better. And let's space it in between the my name and the, the profile point a little bit better too. So I'm gonna grab all three of those. So I shift click in the layers panel and grab those all as a group. So I'm kind of spacing that in there in between. And with these together, if I like the size and proportion the way it is, um, I could grab all those and resize them together as well. So I might do that. So let's go ahead and grab all three of these at the same time. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click the Alt key as I resize these. And what that's gonna do is it's gonna expand it out from the center. So that way I'm not expanding it from left to right. So I wanna, I wanna keep the spacing where I have it, but I wanna expand it from the middle to the, to the outside. So I just wanna expand it on that center point. Getting all over the place here, okay. Um, I think I need to move them down just a little bit. So reselect those again. Bring those down just a tad. Yeah, that looks good. Okay. Um, not sure if I'm in love with the uh, with the red. Um, I might go back to the white. Um, we'll see here. I kind of, I don't know. It doesn't really fit uh, too well with the text and all that. So. This is why we use um, layer styles and just kind of getting all over the place. So I apologize for that. So let's go ahead and double click on that layer style and change that color to red. So this is why we, this is why we do it this way. Um, it just makes things like when you're trying to play and make things work together and you're messing with colors, it's a lot easier to use this kind of technique than if you just try to recolor um, all of these logos, um, you know, with a with a paint bucket tool or you know some other type of way. So, um, gonna go and back that out. I think I do like the white better. Um, kind of flows better with all of that in between those two things, and and the text I think pops better that way also. So the last but not least thing that I want to throw in there is the the Yeti guy and. Uh, Mainly, I want to. I mean, I'm I'm kind of duplicating here logos, but um, a I really love this logo. I think it's super fun. And B, I need a I need something to fill this this corner, this this you know this tip right in here. Um, it's just kind of a blank, um, empty space, and I'm not really digging that. So I'm gonna go ahead and open the uh, the logo, the Yeti logo that I want to use for this, and that one is this one right here. So it's just a fun picture um, and it's something that they, a logo that they put on some of their bike frames and uh, I really love it. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab this and pull this out and then bring it into here. Um, I don't need to color this, but I do need to obviously get rid of the, um, the black around it. Um, so I'm gonna rename the layer first, so Yeti cycle um, Yeti, I'm gonna call it Yeti cycle Yeti. Um, and we need to rotate this. So you'll notice that on um, the corners here, when you have your move tool selected, you see a little uh, curvy arrow there. Um, you know, I wanna rotate this to the left. You could also go up to image and then, um, or edit and then go up to um, transform and then rotate. It's kind of the long way to do it. So uh, what I do is I hit the shift key with that little arrow there, the little curve arrow, and then when you hit the shift key, it'll it'll rotate it in, um, uh, you know, like basically like uh, equal increments. So you're not like doing something at like 45.6, you know, so it's not something funky like that. Um, so on this one, I also need to get rid of the um, the black around it. So once again, I'm gonna employ the magic wand. So I'm gonna type, use the W key on my keyboard to collect, select the magic wand tool. And then I'm going to click around in the, um, the background area there. Now, what's gonna happen here if I just click the layer mask? Let's watch what happens real quick. I'm gonna click on that. And then what's it gonna do? It's gonna take away the Yeti, right? That's not what I wanna take away. I wanna take away the black. 
So I'm gonna control Z on that. So what I need to do is I need to inverse this selection because when I click with my magic wand tool, I'm clicking in this most solid area, right? For the most part, when we've used a magic wand tool, we've clicked inside a logo and then clicked a layer mask. Well, that's worked because those have been solid logo colors. They've been a solid, it's like a solid object, a solid you know, symbol or whatever. Um, but this Yeti is a combination of black and white. And so this would make it almost impossible to do it that way. Now, what we can do though, is we have a solid black, you know, outline or a solid black fill in the background here. So instead of clicking inside of the Yeti, what we're gonna do is we click on the outside in the black area and we're gonna go up to select inverse. So what this is gonna do is this is going to basically, instead of selecting what's in the black, and then when we create the layer mask, it's not gonna take away the Yeti. Instead, it's gonna just take away the black. So it's basically just selecting the Yeti on the inside. So it's a quick and easy way to select something when you have you know, just a single color background that you wanna get rid of. So I'm gonna click on the layer mask now, and that just goes away. So I'm gonna click back and get into my move tool here. And I, I, I'm not gonna be able to fit this whole thing in here now. I could do something like this, oh, hang on. I could uh, rotate, you know, this wouldn't be a bad, you know, place to kind of put this in here, but you'll notice that this would be really hard to kind of get this to fill, you know, in all this area and make it actually look kind of good. Um, I could try to flip this and uh, let's see here, let's hit to return. I could try to flip this by going to um, uh, image, no, edit transform and then um, flip vertical or flip horizontal. We want to flip horizontal. So we kind of flip it that way, right? And I could try to like make this fit in here and kind of try to like get that to work and all that kind of stuff. And I just, you know, I just think it's going to be too hard to make it work this way. So I'm going to control Z, control Z, control Z, control Z, come on. There we go, flip it back there, get it back to that way. Okay, so what I'm gonna do instead is I'm just gonna make it fill right into, the, right into here. And I'm not gonna worry that I can't get the whole bike in there, that's okay. Cause really I just want, what I want is the Yeti. Cause I just think the Yeti is just super cool, super, super cool. So I'm just gonna make this as big as I can to still make it kind of fit in this area. Um, that might be too big, let me zoom out just a little bit. And I know it's gonna kind of, that point there, that's just gonna be an outline of that stroke. So I don't have to get it all the way down in there. Um, let's just maybe make it just a tad bit smaller. And I think I could probably make that work. Let's see, how far up do I need to get it? Let's come back here just a little bit more maybe. There we go. Kind of center that in there with his head as best I can. Okay, so now I've got some you know extra stuff going on right here, right? Like I need to get rid of the extra stuff around him so he just fits inside of the tip of that pennant. So I'm um, gonna use my handy dandy magic wand tool again. And guess what? I'm gonna use that inverse selection once again so that way I can limit the scope of what I'm gonna do in my masking because um, that's really important. It's really hard to freehand sometimes um, stuff where you want to fit it into a very specific area. So if you use um, the marching ants, the selection to limit, you know, limit your where you're going to, you know, try to mask something out, um, you won't you won't have any errors. Like you won't have any, you know, mess ups. Um, it's a little more precise this way. So we need to locate our um, we need to locate the pennant outline. And it's way down here in the bottom of our layer styles again, um, way down there because we haven't used it in a while. We've added a lot of layers. And we need to select the wand tool, so click W on your keyboard or go to the toolbar and select it. Click on the inside of our pennant uh, shape there, so we have that marching ant outline going around to the triangle. And then next, go up to select inverse. You can also just use the, the up arrow and uh, or shift and then command I um, or control I, but I you know I can't remember that one all the time, so I just tend to go up to the menu there and just select inverse. Okay, now before we do anything, go back up, 
go back up to our Yeti cycle Yeti guy or that whatever layer that you're using. And um, now I need to take my brush and essentially paint away the excesses, you know, of our, of our Yeti. I just want the inside there of the marching ants. So to do that, make sure you are clicked on the layer mask thumbnail. It should be white um, and maybe a little bit of black in there, right? Because that's how masks work. So I'm going to click on just the, just the thumbnail there, okay? And then next I'm going to select the brush tool or click the B key and activate my brush. And the foreground is set to black in my color in my color palette there. So that's what I need. And so see, I can just start magically wiping away this area here. Now, and I can even make my brush larger using the brackets, the right brackets, make it super large. And I can just go over this whole thing, right? And get paint all that away, you know? And sometimes that's the best way to do it because you end up sometimes with a little bit of extra stuff in an image. So you just kind of want to do all that around it. Um, and there you go. I've got my little Yeti guy poking in my, the tip of my, the tip of my pennant. Um, I'm going to go ahead and control D to get rid of the marching ants. I'm going to control or command minus so I can see my overall work here. And I've got all of my visual elements in my pennant, um, as I have them in, um, my example here. So, um, before I would move, before I move on to the next step, I recommend that you get, you know, if you, you need to wrap up any other little like logos that you want to put in or anything like that um, before you move on to this last tutorial. Uh, this last tutorial, we're going to add all those texture type things to the elements that we want in our pennant. So if there's something that you don't have in your pennant yet and you want to you wanna make sure you get it in, take the time to do that right now so you can do that. Also, if you need to clean up anything, you need to resize something or something like that. Now is a good time to do that as well. Um, and uh, we're going to move on to the next tutorial. We're going to add texture and uh, just kind of add another like wow factor um, to our pennant. And I uh, can't wait to show you this because it's going to look uh, really, really great. Um, so I'll see you in the next tutorial. Mm -hmm.